Good day everyone and thank you for attending into our video. We will be listening to our special guest experience as a successful person. Assalamualaikum, I'm Nadira Najwa and, and I'm your host today. Hi, I'm Aina Afika and I'm your question, uh, questioner currently. Hola, I am Nabla Usna and I'm your inquisitor at this moment. Hello, I am Nabla Sara and I am your asker right now. Thank you for being with us. It is a wonderful glory to introduce our honest visitor and speaker today. I understand that this, this is a difficult one, but knowing there is a man of virtue and simplicity, I am overjoyed to introduce him to everyone. He is living inspiration to young people such as university and school students. The name of our honest speaker is Mama Anif B. Azman. He is 23 years old. Now his rank is acting sub-lieutenant. He also served four years in the Navy. He went to student exchange in the United States Institute is one of his notable accomplishments. Wow, our speaker was incredible. Two thumbs up. He also holds all of the certificates for young officers including Astronomical Navigation Part 1 and 2, Passage Planning, Bridge Competency and Bachelor of Science and Maritime Technology with Honors. His educational journey includes a foundation in engineering, a Bachelor of Science in Maritime Technology, and on the job training at KDLQ and KD Handalan. When asked about him, his identity may not come to price. Okay, sir. Anything you want to say before we start asking you a few questions? Um, before you ask a few questions, I would like to introduce myself first. Assalamualaikum and a very good uh, evening to all of you. So thank you, Nadira, for inviting me for today's interview session. So thanks again to everybody, Aina, Maisara, and Nabila Husna for welcoming uh, me to this interview. So first of all, I would like to uh, say that thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Alright, okay, like, let's get this conversation started. Now, the first question for you, sir. What is your favorite thing about your, your Navy career? As you can see, to have a job as a Navy officer, as a Naval officer itself, is a, a proud moment for me and it's a great thing. As first of all, you have the chance to serve your country, to become a great leader, not only for your country, for yourself, even to your family. And for me, the favorite things about my career is I'm able to go around the world, to explore the world. When you're on board ships, you can feel how it, how, how it feels to be on the ships and see the sea itself. Enjoying the view, how to, you know, how to face those kind of challenges where you know they always rains, they always thunder at the sea. So you get all this kind of experience where anywhere. So that's why you need to have a good attitude. You need to be friendly and be polite, not only to your senior officers but also to your subordinates, the one who works for you, because those guys will actually help you sooner or later. So these kind of things that, for my I think, is the favorite things in the navy itself. As you can see, it's different from the armed forces like the army, the air force. It doesn't work in the ships where you live by your own self at sea because they work only at base and they can, you know, go back home like after they work finish at five, they can see their family. But for us, when we work, like when you go to the seas, like what, like two weeks or like a month. So it's all day work and there's no rest. So that's why you need Help, you need to help each other. So these kind of things, that what makes me proud of the Navy itself, is the favorite. Okay, for the second question, uh, who inspired you and why? It's quite hard for me because I, you know, like lots of great people, such as, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, the Adolf Hitler itself, and someone who talks greatly, like Mahade, and the one who have the best attitude, like our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know there's lots of great uh, person out there but for me the closest um, great person that I can be is the one who I want to be the most is like my uncle that took Dr. Azman Sharifuddin who is the founder of the Mimos itself so he inspires me a lot especially when I was a young boy when I was a kid around like five or six years old that I told him I want to be a scientist one day, but you see where I am now. It's totally different, right? 
So mm. this kind of childhood dreams that I have, I want to be a scientist one day. So what he did to me is he gave me these books, which lots of science experiment in it, and I love it. And also this kind of like you know the attitude where you support people what they want and give the things that they want to learn the most. Mm. That's the first thing I like my uncle. And the second thing is it's really brilliant. I can tell you it's really smart. It like took him like only five years when he go to the United Kingdom for his degree, but then he came back with a PhD. It only took him five years. He was really, really amazing guy, I tell you. And he, he is also one of the, what we call it as, uh, the one who starts the developing, the, who, who starts to develop the programming um, industry in the Malaysia itself. So that's why he created Mimos, the one who uh, try to build or create uh, uh, chips in Malaysia. Next question is, describe a defining moment in your life. What is your biggest accomplishment? Oh, the defining moment in my life. There's a several events that happens in my life that I recognize as a defining moment actually. But can I tell, it's like, I have like two defining moments in my life that actually changed me a lot to what I, I am today. So the first one is when I was on board the best dance ship that the RMN have. RMN stands for Royal Malaysian Navy. So this term we have, which is the damn best ship, which is the Frigate 2000. And I was on board KDLQ during that time. Hmm. And I was lucky enough to be on board KDLQ and learn like lots of things. The ship is like, the length of the ship is 106 meter. And the crew of the ships, we have about like 100 something on board the ship. It was really, really lots of crew on board KDLQ. And what, I, what makes uh, KDLQ mm. as, the, 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 as the defining moment in my life is because mm. it was the first of all, it is the first ship in my life. Uh, and the second thing is the thing that I learned on board KDLQ itself. So when I step my right foot on board KDLQ, mm. I tell you it was not easy. My life is like, was really dark. Yeah, it's like this very moment. It was really hard to learn everything, to you know catch, catch up, to become fast learner, to become brilliant one day, it is impossible. Learner, to become brilliant one day, it is impossible. So I'm facing a really difficult time over there. And I'm proud of myself that I'm able to go through it. And I'm able to learn lot, lots of things. And on board KDLQ, I learn. I learn the most important thing is attitude. Why? Because when I was KDLQ, if you doesn't give cooperation, if you have a bad attitude, but during that time you just a, as a you know, uh, officers under training. So if you have this kind of you know arrogant attitude where you not please other ship crews, even though they are your sub subordinates, they will not teach you about the ships. That's really hard. That same applies uh, as you guys. If you want to go for a, you know for a job one day, you need to be friendly towards your uh, employees because they the one who, who will help you one day. So that's uh, the defining moment. I was proud of myself to be on board KDQ. I was able to, you know, on board KDQ. I got a chance to ride a helicopter, which is Alpha, Whis Alpha Whiskey 139, Augusta Westland, Super Lynx. And uh, I went to several exercises with other countries. I met with uh, the Japan, uh, with the Australian Navy. I was really proud of myself to on board KDQ. And the second one is, of course, Alhamdulillah, with a rescue from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I went to the United States for a, um, for a, what we call it as courses, uh, which entitled the study of the United States through author and public services. So I learned like quite a bit about the United States of America and also a little bit about their public services. And I call it as a defining moment for me because the I feel really, you know, like was really hard for me to go to the United States. You've been competing. It's like 1,000 officer cadets from the National Defense State of Malaysia. So it was really hard. I tell you, it was really hard to compete with them. And the interview itself was really, really challenging. The one who interviewed me, the one who be the panel, it's like it's not. It's like it's two stars. Brigadier, Brigadier General. It was so for me. I was really, really intimidated by him because he was uh, the commandant of my academy. 
and he holds the most, you know, hold the most power inside the academy. So I tell you, it was really, really hard. And also for me, and it was defining because I was able to surpass my friends, even though my pointers is not that even high. What was the most hardest lesson you ever had to learn? It was really hard question. So there's one time in the National Defense University of Malaysia and one time in the onboard KDDQ itself. So the first time that I learned my lesson, the hardest is when I have the ability to approach my senior officers and ask them to give us some privilege. The question is, as you can see, that the senior officers like tells me it was really not good to do to do that because it looks like I'm challenging other senior officer cadets. So that was really bad in a way. And also it puts the power of the senior officer cadet itself like not as good as the as I can do. So this kind of you know the hierarchy problem that we have uh, in the military makes the makes the things get difficult. So that's the hardest thing that I learned is the hardest lesson because in the military, what you need to do is lay yourself low because of why? You just need to do the job as you were told and not try to, you know, make yourself too great because people will take advantage of you. It same goes to you guys when you guys in the university. Try not I'm not trying to tell you not to be a great person, but there's a limit to the thing. Okay. So make sure you know your limits before your advantage, I mean your advantage eats yourself. What is your personal motto? What is my personal motto? Yes. I was served in the Royal Malaysian Navy and the Royal Malaysian Navy motto is ready to sacrifice. So this kind of mentality you need to have for you to serve this kind of service. So by sign your family, your hobbies in order for you to serve your service. It same goes to everyone outside there. Okay, you get what I'm saying, right? Okay, uh, last question from me. Uh, what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? So there's a lot of advice actually that I want to give to you, right? As a what I can say to you in a short term is you need to have two things in your hand. First is common sense and the second one is courtesy. Why I talk about common sense and courtesy? Common sense is where you use your, you know, your senses to think about something. But the same goes like to your job and work unless you really really doesn't understand about the job or what's uh, really needs then you ask your supervisor it was really really you know easy to ask your uh, supervisor itself rather than you get yourself blamed for the jobs that have been did wrongly so this with this common sense i tell you you would able to get uh, done of your job uh, really well so the second one is a courtesy what does the courtesy means that i'm trying to say is for instance in the bus when you sitting then you saw uh, when you then you see a pregnant woman, of course you give the seats to the pregnant women, right? So this kind of thing that I'm talking about. So with the courtesy comes with the humble, with the kindness, of values, with the you know, have a really really good mannered kind of values. So this kind of uh, this courtesy that I'm talking about. So if you have common sense and courtesy, which involve all the atti attitudes that I want to try to say, so inshallah, the knowledge, the experience will come to you. People are willing to share. To the person who are willing to learn. So if you are really really want to learn something, show your interest. Don't be intimidated by the person. We are living in a society where human doesn't eat human. We only eat foods, right? So there's no thing that should you should be scared of. So try to you know lift yourself up. Be more confident of, of yourself. So it's okay not to know something, but it is not okay for you to stay that way. So you need always to learn because in this life, we need always to you know learn and try to explore and try to have a really, really, really adventurous life. Thank you, Sahani, for being, with, for being here with us today. And thank you for taking the time to answer our question. I wish you a blessed day. In conclusion, life is meant to be difficult, hard work and success go, in, go hand in hand. Nothing is delivered to us on a silver platter, so we had to keep trying until we succeed. In true, life is full of challenges that only the most dedicated individuals can overcome. 
we must also have the proper attitude toward our goals. To be honest, to succeed in, in life, the person, the person must put in a lot of effort. Thank you again, Sahani. We have learned a lot from you today. Thank you for you all taking the time to watch our video. I wish you all the best in fulfilling your dreams. I hope that this video inspire you to achieve more success in your life. Please like our video and leave a comment on it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.